Biosphere 2 was created about 30 years ago to try to understand how the Earth as a system operated and to see what it would take if we wanted to go to another planet and have uh, people live in that planet. In the case of Biosphere 2, we have an ocean, a rainforest, a desert, mangroves, and to see how these various biomes can become resilient to global climate change and to take those solutions of resiliency to the world at large. The research at Biosphere 2 is field research, but controlled. Biosphere 2 is the largest controlled field research station in the entire world. Biosphere 2 is truly unique because of its scale. There is nothing that rivals it anywhere in the world. We have a fully established rainforest, a large experimental ocean system, and the Landscape Evolution Observatory, the world's largest earth science experiment, all dedicated to understanding the impacts of global climate change. LEO stands for the Landscape Evolution Observatory. It came to be actually from a group of scientists who come from interdisciplinary backgrounds and who collaborated for over two years to come up with an experiment that was going to help address a grand challenge. And that grand challenge is the fate of water in semi-arid environments. The unique features of it is the fact that it is in triplicate, so there are three of them. We can control not only the amount of water that goes onto these slopes, but also the atmospheric conditions, including temperature and gas composition. The Biosphere 2 ocean mesocosm is truly unique in the world. It's a 2.6 million liter uh, tank that is completely dedicated to innovative research on coral reef ecosystems. So with that scale, we can truly look at um, dynamics at coral reef ecosystem scale unlike anywhere else in the world. The Biosphere 2 Ocean right now is the first phase of a really exciting three-phase project. So right now we are looking at what's called bioremediation on reefs. So trying to understand with really degraded reef systems like we expect to see in the future, uh, how uh, biogeochemical cycling is operating on these algae dominated reefs and the role of microbes uh, in those dynamics. The rainforest biome at Biosphere 2 is the largest enclosed rainforest in the world. Uh, it is a fully mature 30-year-old rainforest that has grown up inside of this ecosystem and we use it for research in ways that we can't experiment on the outside world. VALD stands for Water, Atmosphere, and Life Dynamics, and this is a campaign that we ran last year in 2019 with colleagues from Europe uh, and across the U.S. In this campaign, we ran a drought experiment where we turned off the water for two full months and watched the ecosystem respond to drought. And over the course of that drought, we introduced a lot of isotope tracers that let us really particularly see how carbon moves into the forest canopy and through the soils, or how water is drawn up from the deep uh, reaches of the soil surface and, and then transpired and released back to the atmosphere. Most of the food, energy, and water solutions and initiatives are currently outside the glass of Biosphere 2. And over there, what we're studying is this co-location of food production and energy production with the hope of saving water, um, dialing back the stress that our food and energy systems experience, and trying to find ways of pushing them both to maximize efficiencies. This idea of agrivoltaics is literally the mashing up of two words of agriculture and photovoltaics, which is the fancy word for solar panels. So in an agrivoltaic system, you literally grow the food underneath the shade of the solar panels overhead. So it's a way of harvesting the sun twice. Those solar panels capture much of the sunlight that they need to, op to function, and the food production underneath gets some of the diffuse light that comes through and having the solar panels capture some of that sunlight means that this, the plants underneath can actually function really well. The future of Bias for Two looks very promising. It's essentially a time machine allowing us to look forward into the future and understand how our environments may be impacted by the changes we predict coming. I think we're just at the beginning of its importance in the research at, uh, because of climate change. More and more research will be done at Biosphere 2 dealing with resiliency, and there will be resiliency for corals, there will be resiliency for rainforests, there will be resiliency in food safety and security. That's the direction Biosphere 2 is taking.